Hello everyone and welcome back once again to the channel and to another Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial. In today's video we will be taking a comprehensive look at the HUD system in the PMDG 737, which in my opinion is the first aircraft for the sim that has made this system useful enough to actually use it in flight. Not a whole lot of material is available on this topic as far as I was able to look up, so for that reason I will try my very best to explain all of the different information that you can derive from the HUD and how you can use it during a flight. If you are new to the channel, be sure to do a touch and go on that subscribe button along with the bell icon so you never miss out on any new content. If you find this tutorial useful, a like would be greatly appreciated as well and there are plenty more on my channel that you can go watch after this one. Now without further ado, let's jump into the flight deck. Here we have the subject of today's video. For those of you who are completely new to aviation or this type of system, a HUD stands for Heads Up Display and is basically a piece of glass in front of the pilot on which all kinds of flight information is projected to allow the pilot to be able to look straight ahead of him instead of switching between the flight instruments and the outside view all the time. This system reduces the workload of a pilot especially during landing and is a pretty nifty piece of equipment if you are used to it. HUDs are by no means new technology, they have already been implemented in fighter jets and large military freighters for quite some time, and very basic forms of it already existed during World War II. But these days more and more airliners also come equipped with these displays, and the same goes for flight simulator add-ons. The HUD in the Boeing 737 by PMDG has two main modes, one of which only being used during ILS landings. We will discuss the second mode later on in the video, but let's start with the layout that you will see the most during your flights. This is what it looks like during a standard departure. For the untrained eye, it might seem very complicated at first, but as soon as you figure out what everything on the display means, it starts to become a lot more clear. The HUD basically displays all of the information that you can also find on the primary flight display in front of and below of the pilots. The most obvious information that you can see are the speed tape all the way to the left, displaying your airspeed along with all of your programmed V-speeds, selected MCP speed and also the ground speed. All the way to the right you can see the altitude tape, displaying your altitude above sea level or ground level depending on your altimeter setting. Above the tape you can find your selected altitude and below the altitude tape to the left is your vertical speed reading. In the middle of the screen you can see an artificial horizon with heading indications on it. The actual attitude of the aircraft is displayed by this symbol over here. This is however just an indication of where your nose is pointing at. Where the aircraft is actually going is displayed by the flight path vector. The little circle is supposed to be your flight director, so in order to follow that you need to keep the little circle within the flight path vector. The little arrow symbol to the left of your flight path vector has the same purpose as the speed trend vector and that is to show you your acceleration. If it's below the line of your flight path vector you are decelerating and vice versa. Below the attitude indicator is also a yaw indicator which shows you where your aircraft is pointing horizontally. This is quite useful during crosswind landings slash takeoffs. Moving on to the lower edge of the screen, we can see a horizontal situation indicator with your heading and your selected course. To the left, there is also some extra information about the ILS system that is being used, or if you are following LNAV, it will display the next waypoint in your flight plan. All the way at the top, we can see a bank indicator indicating how sharply you are turning. Below that, you have your Mach speed, and to the left and right of that, there are some flight mode enunciators indicating which modes the flight director is in or the autopilot if it's engaged. If that's the case then it will read CMD instead of FD. Lastly there is also an angle of attack indicator so you can keep an eye on that as well at all times. 
So that's everything for the first mode. Let's see how it looks during an ILS landing when you have engaged approach mode. As you can see, the ILS mode is quite a bit decluttered to make it easier to see the runway while still providing all the necessary information. The mode is displayed on the screen by A3, which means this mode can be used for every ILS approach until category 3. The speed and altitude tapes have been removed and replaced by a radio altimeter reading with the vertical speed below it and a speed indication to the left of the height reading. Keep in mind that the speed displayed in the upper left corner is only your selected MCP speed and not your actual airspeed, so be sure not to confuse the two by looking at the wrong one, otherwise you might stall the aircraft during the landing. At the bottom you have the DME reading for the ILS system and a ground speed indication. The dotted line below the horizon is your glide slope, and ideally you want to have your flight path vector at the same level throughout the approach, again with the flight director indicator in the middle. At the top we have the bank indicator once again along with the flight mode annunciators and angle of attack indicator, and finally your attitude indicator. Right before landing a number of extra things should become visible on the screen. Once you pass 50 feet above ground level, and a set of plus symbols will appear on your flight path vector advising you to initiate the flare. After touchdown the HUD display will be decluttered even more by removing useless information and making the view for the pilot even more clear. This is what it looks like on the ground, same stuff as before. So that covers pretty much all of the information a HUD can provide you with. One more tip before we end the video, during landing be sure to make use of the flight path vector as it is a direct indication of where your aircraft is going. You thus want to try and keep it on your aiming point and glide slope indicator as much as possible and during the flare it can be used to level out enough to avoid hard landings by getting it more or less on the horizon. That's all I have for you guys today, if you liked the video be sure to smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I also have a Discord server intended for group flights and landing competitions, which you can join by clicking the link in the description below. I look forward to seeing you guys there as well. For now, happy flying and soft landings to you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya!